time has come to act. I believe we have no choice. They're not the witches that you see in, like, some children's books of, you know, long pointy hat and a crooked nose. They are gorgeous women. They can control the weather. They are at one with nature. They are creatures which work in clans. We have Serafina Pekela's clan, which is the Lake Inara clan. She is the queen of that one. And then you have the Lake Lubana clan, which I am the queen of as Ruta Scardi. They have something called cloud pine. It's a type of tree that kind of like runs through their veins that gives them the ability to fly. You can't take it away from a witch without that being really painful. There is a region in the furthest north where demons cannot go. To become a witch, a girl must cross it alone. It allows separation without breaking the soul. Witches have an ability to separate from their demons. They can also send their demons off to go and deliver messages or listen out for things, and then they can come back and uh, tell them what happened. There have been times when certain clans have made agreements with humans that other witches would disapprove of. <laughs> between witches and humans is kind of difficult. However, witches also need humans to create more witches. There's real love there with witches and their chosen partners. They are able to communicate with each other without being in person present with each other. They hear things that normal human ears can't hear. They hear whispers through the worlds where the veils between the worlds are quite thin. Normally, they cannot travel through worlds, but they do it only because Azrael has blown a hole in the sky. Their goal as witches is to fulfill the prophecy. Serafina Pekla, in particular, believes the prophecy is about Lyra. The prophecy is not all there is. The Magisterium has thrived under your indifference. Ruta Scardi will show them we are indifferent no more. Ruta, she's very clear in her beliefs. That might mean fighting, that might mean being part of a war. The witches have a knowledge that far exceeds anyone else. They are strong, they're warriors. They have an in-depth knowledge of nature and the cosmos. They have foreknowledge of a destiny that no one else has known before, and it's their duty to guide them along that path. The fate of more than this world depends on her. You have something important to do. But you have to make the connection yourself. Lara in season one goes on a journey which is fueled by curiosity of dust and what she heard her father say about it. Where does that light come from? It isn't light, it's dust. What's dust? dust. 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 In season two, Lara thinks it must surely be good and she's going to find out what it is. This is it, St. Peter's College. Lyra encounters a scholar called Mary Malone. She is a physicist and she's investigating dark matter. Sometimes people are afraid of things they don't understand. Dark matter does sound pretty ominous, but in my experience, it's actually quite beautiful. Dark matter is what Lyra and Azriel refer to as dust. Mary has been studying it as part of her research into quantum physics. It's the particles that are in between everything else in the universe. Mary Malone's cave is this sort of computer thing that finds the movement that these really strange particles make. She calls them shadow particles because you can't see them and light doesn't affect them. Mary believes that these are conscious particles. You can communicate with them. She sets it up like as an Olympiata and she gets answers out of these shadow particles. And they connect to it by asking it questions. When you get yourself into this mental state where you're expecting something, but without being impatient. Lyra discovers that there is a relationship between dark matter and dust, and that that dark matter is of crucial, crucial importance. We've got to be careful, that's all. Spectres are everywhere. What are spectres? Is that why no one's here? You don't know what spectres are. Spectres are a particular form of creature who feed off dust or feed off the human soul. They are the creatures of Chittagasi and they have been a plague upon Chittagasi. 
You can't see them unless you're an adult, so they kind of attack you when you're at the point of change, which is basically puberty. You're safe yet. You're still a girl. He's close, though, to the change. What change? When you're a man. To go out and see what happens, it's overrun by children. It's a really frightening world because these kids only really last for a short amount of time. That's their existence, and there's no adults to look after them or to care for them. I haven't got parents. It's better to them, so it's just us now. So when you're an adult, the idea is that they take everything that's human away from you. They take out your soul. It's almost like a zombie, a person that isn't aware of who they are, isn't aware of anything. If you are attacked by a spectre, you will be left as a human shell, but you will be denied any thought from then on. Go on. They don't make any physical changes to you. They literally suck out everything in you that makes you human. Spectres, they are horrendous and are the most horrible creatures that have ever existed. For each and every one of you, in the face of an attack on everything we hold sacred, I implore you to channel the authority in this time of need. The Magisterium believe that the authority is the creator, the head of everything. Only the authority can know the mysteries of this world. The world that we found Lyra in is one where there is a kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven implies power being very focused at the top. In the name of the authority, he who shines above us and lights the way, tell me what you know. The authority is the god in Lyra's world. The longer the show goes on, the authority isn't necessarily as powerful as that statement would suggest. Help me fight this war and take on the authority. Help me create a new Republic of Heaven. Right, OK. Let's try this. Ask a question. Angels are creatures of dust. We discover that through Mary Malone, an Oxford scholar investigating dark matter and what she calls shadow particles. She shares some of her research with Lyra, including this device called the cave. What did you find? The shadow particles made contact. They seem to be conscious. They are sometimes known as the Watchers, in that they watch over certain worlds, in the Chittagatse world, for example. You see the idea of angels throughout like, the whole series. On the tower, in the Chittagatse tower, there's angels all around. Centuries ago, angels were seen more prevalently. They appear to guide Mary Malone because there is war brewing. You have been preparing for this as long as you have lived. Save the girl and the boy.